So let's uh, talk about vectors, and specifically, we're going to talk about uh, vector addition. Um, so let's add that in there. So vector addition. How do we add vectors together? And to do that, we're going to be using components of vectors, but we'll build up to it. So first, let's just review some right triangle trig. Um, here's a right triangle. And so we have some sides here. Uh, if my angle is over here, then of course, op opposite the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. And then next to the angle is the adjacent side. And then opposite of the angle is the opposite side. And so we have some trig ratios that we define. Um, you have cosine. Or I think you guys, since you guys learned like Sokotoa and stuff, um, we'll do sine. Sine of this angle here would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine of that angle would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent of the angle would be the opposite over the adjacent. And so out of this, we can, we can solve, you know, for depending on what we're given and what we want. Um, but these are the basic, the three trig functions that we use pretty extensively. Um, the other thing that we'll be using is going to be the Pythagorean theorem, which says that um, h squared is equal to the adjacent squared plus the opposite squared. So we'll be using this stuff, but um, what I want to do is put it into a Cartesian coordinates so that we can start analyzing it and pull out some basic definitions. Um, so in Cartesian, that means that we just have something on the uh, xy, the Cartesian coordinate system. Then we're going to define a vector r, you know, that starts at the origin and goes up to some point. That would be r. And so it's going to go to this point xy. And what we try to do is we want to make it into a um, into a right triangle. That way we can use our trig to find things that you know we may want. This is kind of critical to uh, adding vectors. So if I have an angle here, theta, then I know that to get up to this point, x, y, I have to move in the x direction. And then I'll move in the y direction. And so I get these two other sides, and now I have a right triangle. So now I can use my trig. And so let's go and apply that. So we're going to get um, a sine of the angle would be the opposite, y, over the hypotenuse, which is r. And that's the magnitude of r. And if I multiply this over, then I get that y is going to be r sine theta. Likewise, for cosine, I'll get the adjacent, which is x over r. And so I get x is going to be r cosine theta. Um, for tangent, tangent would be the opposite, tangent theta is going to be the opposite, or y over x. Okay, so what we can do is if I know if I know the magnitude of the vector, so I know the r and I know the angle, then I can pull out the two x and y's using these two. If I wanted to find the angle, well then I can do inverse tangent here. So theta would be inverse tangent of y over x. And if I knew x and y instead of r, and I wanted to know what r is, then I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I would do r squared is x squared plus y squared. So the magnitude of r is going to be the root of r x squared plus y squared. And so it's really these right here that we want to deal with. These are, I think they're on your equation sheet, I'm pretty sure, somewhere. Um, those are the ones that we're going to deal with. Now, I'll, I'll warn you, you have to be careful with whether it's sine or cosine, because that depends on where the angle is and where your, your two sides are. So in general, whichever one is next to the angle, that's going to be the one that is your cosine. That's how you can always keep that straight. Let me show you a quick example of how that breaks. Um, 
for so in this case I was measuring the angle from here, but what if I measured from over here? So suppose what I gave you was the angle from the horizontal, I mean the vertical, not the horizontal. So still going to x, y, but now we're going to do the angle here. We'll call it. So now in this case, um, since my my triangle is kind of over on this side, when I draw it in, I'm going to do the y here and x here. It doesn't matter which order we go in. So now what you can see is that the it's all flipped. So my y value is going to be r, and it's next to the angle, so that's r cosine theta. And x would be r sine theta. I'm sorry, phi, or phi, whatever that is. I always forget. So whether, which trig function you use depends on where your angle is. Now why does this work? Well, it's because if you look at it, in these two cases, this was theta. Well, phi is just 90 minus theta. And so what we have is a 90 degree shift. And so cosine and sine are equal in those cases for a 90 degree shift. So if this was, you know, if this was 40, then this would have to be 50. Well, cosine of 50 is the same as sine 40. We get this complementary angles. Um, we get the same value for opposite trig functions. Um, okay, let's try some examples. So let's do, um, we have a vector r, which goes up to the point four, seven. You need to find the magnitude of r and the angle. So what I recommend is just pause the video and then calculate what these are. Okay, so to get the magnitude of r, we're going to draw in our, our components, our x and y. So there's x, there's y, so we get x, y, we'll find theta to be there. Okay. So the magnitude here, the r value, um, they tell me it's 4 and 7. Well, that's my x and y. So they give me x and y. So I can just write it in here. here. This is 4 and this is 7. So I have two of the sides. I need the third side. So we'll use Pythagorean. So r squared is going to be x squared plus y squared. So r is going to be the square root of x squared, which is 4 squared plus 7 squared. And so we get an R value of about 8.06. That's the magnitude. To get the angle, well, the angle, I'm going to use the X and Y values, and that's opposite over adjacent, so that's tangent. So I get tangent theta. It's going to be Y over X. And you have to be careful here, because a lot of times we put these upside down. So theta is going to be inverse tangent of 7 over 4. If you calculate that, making sure that your calculator is in degrees, you get 60.26 degrees. So that was an example. Let's do another one. So now let's go, let's go to let's go to a different quadrant. That's a terrible line. So suppose now my R vector comes backwards to the point negative 2, 5. So again, you want the magnitude of the r and theta. Let's go ahead and pause it and try it. Okay, so um, process is the same. We're going to draw in our x and y to create a right triangle. We'll put theta in there so we know what um, trig functions to use. So again, the magnitude is going to be the root of x squared plus y squared. So r is going to be the square root of negative 2. This is negative 2 and this is 7. Negative 2, but in parentheses squared plus 5 squared. We have to put in parentheses because we want to square that negative. It becomes positive. 
And if you calculate that, you're going to get an R value of 5.385. Okay, now for the um, angle, we would be we would do tangent theta is going to be y over x because y is opposite, x is next to it. So theta is going to be inverse tangent of 7 over negative 2. So theta, when you plug this in, you'll get negative uh, 68.199 degrees. So what's this negative? Okay, so the negative indicates where we're measuring from. In a Cartesian, we typically will measure off the positive x-axis. So measuring from here, going around like this, those are positive angles. If it's negative, then that means that we're measuring from the other direction. We're measuring this way. So negative. So I get a negative because we're indicating that it's in this direction. So we're measuring theta this way. So in this case, we probably just want the magnitude, or you would say like it's 68.199 off of the negative x-axis. Something of that degree. All right, let's try, we're gonna change it up now. So that was finding uh, r and theta. What about x and y? So suppose you have a 10 unit vector. I'm not worrying about units. They're just, you know, it's just something. So r is 10 at 25 degrees. Find the x, y. Where is the object if you go through this, like a displacement or something? Go ahead and pause and try. Okay, so the process is very similar. We're going to um, put in our x and our y, and that forms our right triangle. So now we can use some trig. And I have the hypotenuse, and I want the adjacent and the opposite. So we're going to use our cosine and sine functions. Um, since x is next to the angle, then x is going to be equal to the magnitude r times cosine theta. So we get x is going to be 10 times cosine 25. Making sure everything's in degrees, you're going to get 9.06. For y, we're going to get r, it's opposite the angle, so that's r sine theta. So that's going to be 10 times sine 25. So y is equal to 4.23. So there's your x and y. All right, let's do another one. All right, so let's look at another example. Let's give it r is going to be 8 at 10 degrees. So find the x, y. Go ahead and pause and try. Okay, so again, we're going to just draw in our triangle. And there's my x. There's my y. So that makes my right triangle. So um, x is next to the angle, so that's going to be my cosine, and y is opposite, so that's sine. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, x is going to be r, the magnitude of the vector, times cosine theta. So x is equal to 8 times cosine negative 10. Why negative? So going back to what I said previously, since we're down below, we're kind of going in this direction, the clockwise direction, so our angles have to be negative. And if you calculate that, you get 7.88. Seems good. Let's go over to y. So y is equal to r times sine theta. So y is going to be 8 times sine negative 10. So y is equal to negative 1.389. Does that make sense? Yes, because the x is positive, but y has to be negative. If you didn't include that negative in there, then you would have gotten a positive value. So if you did that, make sure you go back to your picture and see if it makes sense. And You might have to change your sign at that point. Okay, so in general, what we're doing here is is we're defining um, components of a vector. 
And so these, these XY pieces, I'll call them like pieces of the vector. These are our components. We call them vector components. They're what make up the vector. Vector components. And so we can use all of this stuff just to go back. If you have a vector r and an angle theta, then it's made up of two pieces called rx. So again, this is just our x piece and then r in the y direction. So we're just changing the notation a little bit. We're just saying that this is the magnitude, the piece of r in the x and the piece of r in the y direction. And then we have all of our definitions that we've built. So our x in this case would be r cosine theta and our y would be r sine theta. Again, depending on where the angle is. And then if you wanted to find the angle, that would be inverse tangent of r y over Rx, or vice versa if the angle is somewhere else. And R would be the square root of the component squared, the sum of the component squared. And so this is the stuff that you will be using over and over and over again, uh, particularly these two here. Okay, so the reason we want to be able to do this is to add and subtract vectors. So add and subtract vectors. Okay, so if I had two vectors, let's say A and B, like this, and I wanted to find A plus B, then what I can do is I can pull out all of the little components. So this would be A in the X direction, A in the Y direction, and then B in the, uh, B in the X direction be in the y direction. So what we're looking at, if we think of like you're walking along this path, so you go this way and then you walk this way. It's the same as walking this way, then this way, then this way, and this way. We end up at the same spot. Or what I could do is I could slide this one down. So that would be right here. So I did was slide down bx. And then I could um, slide over a y. So what I can see is it's the same as going a x b x and then a y b y. And this is how we're going to add vectors. This is the graphical way that we add vectors. So what we see is we can define a in terms of its components. a x plus a y. Just know that this is not straight up arithmetic. We can't just add these two sides and get that. It's just saying that the vector is made up of two pieces and B is made up of two pieces as well, BX plus BY. So A plus B would be AX plus AY. That's my A vector plus bx plus by. And this is all addition, so we can move it around. So we get ax plus bx plus ay plus by. And that would be the sum. Now at this point, you can't, again, you can't just add these up we need to change it over into, we have to use our trig. And so we could say like the magnitude is going to be a, x is next to the angle, say theta and phi. So it'd be a cosine theta plus b cosine like that. So we need to change it into the magnitudes. Um, a sine theta plus b sine phi, like that. But, you know, you'd probably do some calculations to get these values. Um, all right, so the last thing is vector notation. So um, 
just what the, what we're saying is that to add a vector, you add the components. To add vectors, you add components. All the x's, all the y's. And then we can find the total. So there's a convenient way to do this, to keep track of stuff. And this is with uh, vector notation and unit vectors. Vector notation. So if I had like A go this way, it's an angle theta. And B goes like this. And I knew the, um, the pieces of it. I knew the components. So let's say that this is like four and three. And then we'll go five and two. Then I can write these in notation that makes it easier to deal with. It's not so messy. So A in this case would be four in the X direction. And to indicate the X direction, we use this. It's an I with a little hat. We say it's I hat plus three J hat. So that's just vector notation. And these are called unit vectors. They don't do anything. They just tell me the direction. And then B would be five I hat minus two J hat. Why is it minus? Because that's in the negative Y direction. So now it makes it easy. So A plus B would just be, we add up all the I's. So four plus five I hat plus three minus two J hat. So we get a plus b is going to be 9 i hat plus 1 j hat. So what that means is that to go from here to here, we would go 9 in the x direction. That makes sense. And then up 1. So that gives me my final vector. Okay, last note. Um, Oh, so the these these i hats and stuff. Um, essentially, what we're looking at is i hat is going to be your x direction. Um, J hat is y the y direction, and uh, k hat would be z direction. If we're dealing with three dimensions, which you probably won't have to. So the last thing is just subtracting vectors. Um, So subtracting. So a minus b, doing stuff like this. That's just adding a negative. So that's the same as a plus the inverse of b. Okay. So if I have, uh, let's just define a vector. Say three i hat plus five j hat, and b will be um, four i hat minus two j hat. Okay, so if I want to subtract these vectors, what I need is I need the inverse of b. And to do that, all we do is change the signs. So instead of four, it's negative four i hat. And instead of negative two, it's positive two j hat. So now a minus b would just be a plus negative b. So we would get three minus four i hat and five plus two. J hat. So that would be whatever, whatever. Negative one I hat plus seven J hat. Um, so that's subtracting. So out of all of this, the most important thing is being able to get those components of the vectors, pulling out the X and Y. We'll be using that in the next section with two dimensional motion.